Hello, hello, this is Robin Sampson with BibleJournalOf.com. I'm going to show you how I made this page and this verse map. So I just thought I'd walk you through it and let you watch me remake this. And we'll start with the verse map, which is in your kit. It's a blank verse map. And I've already done this one, and I've hidden the text so you can see what I've done. And the first thing I did was decide what labels I was going to use. And the way that you will fill them in is going to be super easy because all the answers are in your class lesson. So here are the labels that I decided on. And let me give you some hints on when you make these labels, some of the things that will help you. Ungroup. Okay, to make sure that all your labels are the same size, I went up here and decided mine would be three quarters of an inch. So you type in 0.75 inch on every single one of them. So they're all the same size because it's going to look a little silly. When you first bring them in, they're quite a bit bigger and then you have to narrow them down so you want them all to be the same size or it's going to look kind of funny so that was one thing I wanted to tell you and of course you want to have a drop shadow and the drop shadow that I'm using is just one for the distance and two for the size I'm in linear burn opacity is about 39 percent angle is 41 you can stop the video to get copy that and I used copy go on to one of the out one of the drop shadows and go copy layer and then you can put that on all the other drop shadows let me take them off first so you can see how that works so I'm clearing the shadows and now I want to just go copy and paste and what's neat is that you can do a whole bunch of them at one time. So all those are on there. And because I don't want them to move, I'm going to go ahead and group them and lock them while I work. Now, we're going to do the scripture. Go ahead and find the scripture, which is this one. And the font I used was Tabasco. And I'm going to have to leave you a link because there's a lot of different Tabasco fonts. Let's zoom in and see how I did this because it fits on the line. The way you do that is in Photoshop, you use this little character map here. And you can see that my font is 40, but my if I go automatic, it doesn't fit. So what you do is play, and every font is a different size, so you're just going to have to play with it. Some fonts you can barely fit 20 points in there and others you have to go to 50 so it just depends then when you get in there you just play with the fonts until you figure out what size it needs to be to fit on the lines and that was kind of close there but I still So 42 worked really well for my space in between. Now, if you have something that gets really long and goes over, I think this one I had to shorten. I went into here into the um, horizontal scale and took it down to 96% because when it was at 100%, it was too big so when I took it down just a little bit it fit so that's how I worked with my verse mapping now I just get a lot out of verse mapping any verse because the first thing I do is always the keywords and that always helps especially if you're doing a whole passage and then I go into the context and the context in Deuteronomy 32 was this was right before Moses' death. He had already met with Joshua and gave him over, you know, the leadership. 
And then God told him to do several things, and then he uh, wrote his song. So that's what we know about the context of 32. Now, I have a, a video about the time when Joshua took over for Moses, and you can see that below in the lesson, but Deuteronomy 32 is a very tiny part of that. It's maybe only a minute, but if you wanted to watch the whole video, you can get a real good idea of the time period and the context. And then the outline is also in your lesson. And all I did was make a, an outline of Deuteronomy 32 of what was the main things in it. And you can do that real easy if you go to like Bible Gateway or somewhere. And they won't have all the, the detail I have here, but they will have several uh, headings like the Song of Moses. And that always helps with Bible study. And then I think the most important are the cross-references. Go to Google and type in Bible cross-references. You'll get this page at openbible.info. And all you do is type in your verse. And you'll get a dozen cross-references to look up to see if it works for your verse. Some of them might not, but most of them fit beautifully. And reading through these verses just helps me tremendously. I think it's one of the most important things I do in my Bible study. I go to this almost every single day. And before I study anything, I go make cross-references and read all the other verses so I can just get a really good overview. So let's get back to the page. I went ahead and um, put mine on my journal page. I put one, two, three, four different cross-references because it just is huge to me to see what other verses say. Our main verse says, For they are a nation void of counsel, and there is no understanding in them. If they were wise, they would understand this. They would discern their latter end. Now, look at the cross-references. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because if you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. That was in Hosea. In Jeremiah, for my people are foolish. They know me not. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are wise in doing evil, but how good they do not know. They know not. And then in Corinthians, for the wisdom of this world is folly with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. So the, the verses just really, really help me. And I love to include them on a journal page. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So now that I've gone over how to fill this in and how to make your text fit. Now, of course, if you're doing this by hand and you just print this out and write, you're going to write smaller or larger to fit in. So I saved this as a PNG because it was exactly the way I wanted it. And then I can just drag it over. So I saved that separately. Now, first, I did not like the way my verse fit into this area. So I went over to the frames and found a frame that I liked that would fit better. And I wanted to show this to you. Anytime you have a frame on a page, you can always cover it up with an element. And you have a whole other layer there. And you can't tell that, that the frame was there and it even gives... So I knew I wanted to put several of the Bible verses on so I went ahead and got, we had several things from the class freebie. I got a note and some paper scraps. So I'm going to get the verse. I almost always cut off my reference and add it on somewhere else. So to cut a verse, you have to rasterize it first. In Photoshop Elements, you call it Simplify. So I just draw a little box around it and cut it. I'm going to type it in later. So I'm going to leave it like that. And if you haven't seen me do this, 
I'm going to go ahead and show you how to color it. We're going to add a color overlay. And I'm going to add one of these oranges. And you'll see the white, the words are left out because we're in normal blend mode. I need to change that to lighten and boom. So now I'm going to move the frame and the layer together and push Command G on a Mac, Control G on a PC to group and I'm going to lock them. Because when, you do, when you're doing a lot of work on a page, if you have some things locked like the background is locked, then I won't have a, I won't keep hitting it and moving it. Now I can go all over. Um, another thing about this page is this butterfly. One of the things you can do to work around it is just to put something there right over it. We could put verse map card right over it and leave it there. I decided to put it down here and let the butterfly stay on top. And I ended up making the verse map a little bit smaller. There's my verse map. And I did the same thing for the scripture verses here. And then I just go over to Bible Gateway and copy it. And I'm going to put that one on this little one. Long strip. And that's the wrong. I wanted to use the Tabasco. And we're going to have to go down to about 24, I think. Um, no, not quite that far. There we go, 36. And that was Psalm 81.12. And another thing that's really neat uh, when you do this is if you type it in yourself, it's even better. Maybe not every one, but at least the main one. If you type in the scripture on your verse map, it helps you get it into you better to, to type it. So there's that one, and then I'm going to put some washi tape on it. Oh, where is that washi tape? I can't remember what I did with it. Put it in the elements. Washi tape gets a tiny, tiny shadow. I store my shadows in here in the styles because I use them over and over. And the paper is going to get a bigger shadow. This paper, this paper has one built-in shadow, but I'm going to add a little bit more. And it's real easy. That's all you have to do for the, the text to fit it in there. You'll have to play with it a little bit. So I'm going to just for time's sake pull in the other verses that I already had used. And after I get a verse in the box, I go ahead and group that too. So just push Command G on a Mac, Control G on a PC, and now that's all together. We'll do the same thing over here. And this one will group with the washi tape, and we'll put some more washi on this one. If you right click, you can get go back to the layer and just, I wanted to scooch it down for the washi. Get another piece of washi. I want to show you how to remove the background from your verse map if you choose to do so. To remove the white off this page, off the verse map. And I don't want to do it on this page, but I want to show you how to do it in case you want to do it on another page. This page is way too busy to remove the white. I can show you how to remove the white and put a different color background on it. So make sure that your verse map is selected. Remove and drop shadow, say clear layer style, and rasterize it. Now go down here to your style, the little FX, to blending options. Let me move this up so you can see it. 
Okay, this is your blending options, and all you're going to do is move this over until the white goes away. And it doesn't take much. And the white is gone. So now you have the option. But see this little on the FX is still here, so you can put it back. You can go over here. and choose a rectangle and draw a rectangle behind it if you wanted to use another color. So that's another option. And there will be times where you want to just remove the white and just have the background clear, but this isn't one of them. So I liked mine white better, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Control Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, and we're back to normal. And now we'll look at the adding a cluster that does not work. And I'm going to show you how to make that cluster work. And that gives you several things that I wanted to show you on here. I wanted to show you about the frame, how you can overwrite the frame, how you can overwrite like the butterfly on here, how you can um, fit little cross-reference verses all over the page, how to fill out a verse map, and how to make your text fit. So those were just some of the things I wanted to show you. Now I want to show you how to make a cluster fit that won't usually fit. I want to use a cluster that does not fit. There's two clusters that fit perfectly on this page, but I wanted to use one that doesn't fit so I can show you how you can make it fit. So first you rasterize the element that you want to change and then you go over and get your eraser tool and what we're going to do is erase this banner. You can use this little square tool and that will get rid of quite a bit of it quickly and then just click command X on a Mac Control X on a PC, or you can just use your eraser tool. Now I'm going to have to use the eraser tool around this flower and zoom in real big so I can get it. And then the way you make your eraser bigger or littler is by using your brackets. And that's it. So now you have a, a cluster that wouldn't fit, and now it does fit. We're just going to move it down a little bit. And then we'll give that a drop shadow. And we can take off the top also, take off these leaves or the bow that runs into this butterfly. And there you go. So here's the page. You have your verse mapping and then your cross references. I think I added a, a fourth one on my page. And you still fit into where the butterfly is and you were able to overwrite the other frame that was there with another frame. So that was just to give you an idea to be able to utilize your kit further and use more things. So you can always put an element over something that you don't like. I hope that helps you. I will see you in the Facebook. Bye-bye.